Cooking with Chemistry, poem by Roseanne V. Shawiak. Recipes often are related to products of chemistry, mixing spices and ingredients into a dish of insatiable desire, filtering all the scents and aromas into the essences of everything cooked, leaving measurements to sift themselves, measuring with my eyes, knowing when I have enough to blend it all into a mixture befitting royalty, spreading tables with places set in delicious circles awaiting appetites of all hungry family members, saying prayers and digging in with gusto. Blessed thank yous given all around by everyone, appreciating the meal fixed with love and sprinkled with prayers of God. Hmm. Oh, hi. I was just getting ready to make some scones. Why don't you come on in? Good afternoon and welcome to Book and Cook. I am so excited to have you join us on this little adventure because I like books, in this case poetry, and I love to cook. And so I've done Book and Cooks in the past trying to combine those two things into my dream of having a book club and cooking show. Um, trying to think about it, I thought, well, why not try it from home? We can do a Zoom Book and Cook. So here we go. Today we're making scones. And I don't know if you've heard about scones before, they're a bit Scottish, um, but not terribly difficult to do. Just to clarify so that I'm citing my sources, the, my favorite scone recipe is actually um, from the King Arthur Flower website. I alter it just slightly because that's what I sometimes do. So we start off with our flour. Now, a lot of times I like to, um, I use unbleached all-purpose flour, but a lot of times for baked goods, if it doesn't involve a yeast rising bread, I'll use 100% white whole wheat flour too. I actually really like the Kroger brand um, white whole wheat flour. It gives you a little bit more uh, nutritional integrity and it doesn't really affect the way that it cooks up. And no, I'm not a paid endorser. So remember that when you measure your flour, you want to spoon it lightly into the cup and this recipe takes two and three quarters cups of flour so when I have the flour in there then I'm just going to scoop it off lovely over the top nice and even there and put that in and then I'm going to go ahead and do a cup of the unbleached all-purpose flour as well And again, level it off real nicely there and pop that in. So three quarters of a cup, if you do your math correctly, is gonna bring you to a half a cup. And then a quarter cup. And I've done approximately half and half uh, whole wheat flour and bleached all-purpose flour for this particular recipe. Sometimes if I'm just making it for my family, I'll use all just the 100% whole wheat flour and we like that just fine. It gives a little bit of a different, a slightly different texture, but you just have to go with what your preference is. I'm going to get those out of the way for right now. All right, next thing I'm going to add is sugar. Now I'm going to take a third of a cup of sugar is what it calls for, but instead of using regular sugar, for this particular um, scone recipe, I'm going to use brown sugar. Now brown sugar is different because when you measure brown sugar, you want to pack it into your measuring cup, just like that. Okay, so packed brown sugar, and you're going to plop that into your flour as well. There you go. Okay, so we're measuring all of our dry ingredients first. The next item that we're going to uh, put in here is baking powder. So that's going to help with the rise of the biscuits. So once again, it's a tablespoon of baking powder. And so we're going to get that heaped up there and gently level it off with the back of a knife. Whoops, a little bit. 
you get a, a little lump, so you want to make sure that you're not leaving pits and how that's measured. So then that goes in as well with your dry ingredients. The last dry ingredient that we're going to include right now is salt. Now, I it, the recipe calls for salt, unsalted butter, and three quarters of a cup of uh, three. <laughs> that'd be a lot of salt. Um, three quarters of a teaspoon of salt. Um, I am using salted butter today, so I'm only going to use a scant half teaspoon of salt. And this is how I find it to be the easiest way to measure salt. So pour into your hand. And looky there, I've done that a lot of times before, right? So that's a half a teaspoon of salt. Okay, and then I'm going to take my whisk because a lot of times when it says to sift dry ingredients together, whisking them does the trick just fine. Okay, so get those dry ingredients all mixed together. One of the times that I actually do sift my dry ingredients is if I'm using cake flour. Cake flour tends to be pretty clumpy and so you want to make sure that that's really nice and finely sifted but this works just great for this application. Okay so next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to cut in the butter. Now cutting in butter might sound kind of strange and indeed I do generally start off with actually cutting the butter and this is going to take a full stick of butter. So I'm going to open up the butter. You want it to be really cold. In some recipes it calls for softened butter to be used. This is not one of those. You want your butter to be really cold. I just took this out of the fridge a couple of minutes ago. So I'm going to cut the pieces and put them into my dry ingredients. Now there are a couple of different ways that you can cut in that butter, okay? Um, my favorite way to do that is with a pastry blender. Now, again, I'm not trying to be a promoter, but I like the Pampered Chef pastry blender. Some pastry blenders just have wires down here. This is a little bit heavier duty, which makes it easier to blend in the pastry. So to blend, cut in that butter, you're just gonna push down over the butter lots of times, like this. Now you might be saying to yourself, self, or maybe Mrs. Wells, I just don't have a pastry blender, so what do I do? So the reason it's called cutting in the butter is that the original, the original technique it involves using two knives. So I'll show you how to do that real fast. So you're gonna take two table knives here, and you're just going to crisscross them like this until all of those butter pieces are cut into the flour. And it's about, it looks like, kind of like pea gravel in your flour mixture. Another handy dandy way to do that is to use a food processor. If you have a food processor, I'll show you in just a minute. Um, but if you have a food processor, I already have the dry ingredients all put into my food processor here. You can, Put your butter into that and then pulse it until it looks like a really coarse sand. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But I'm gonna to continue to cut this in. So I've been at uh, cutting in the butter for a little while now and you can see um, that the butter, it has been incorporated into little pebble sized bits in the flour. And you want to keep that all um, in those little bits because that's going to help the scones to rise. What happens is those little bits of uh, butter get trapped into the layers of the dough and when they get heated then they melt and release steam which causes those layers to expand which gives you nice light flaky scones. Now another way of cutting in that butter is to use a food processor. So I've already measured all the dry ingredients into the food processor and pulse that a few times to mix those. And then I cut the butter pieces into the food processor, just like I did into the dry ingredients when I was putting it in my hand. And then I'm gonna pulse it a few times. That looks about right. 
So you can see that that's definitely an easier way to go with it, but you want your, your pieces to be really uniform. And when I dump out um, into a, another bowl, I've found that it actually just kind of works as easy just to dump out the blade and all. And then I can take it out and brush it off. And just be careful, it's not super sharp, um, but just be careful like that. And then you're all ready for wet ingredients in that too. Okay, so, which takes us to the wet ingredients. So we're gonna start with two eggs. Get that out of the way. I always crack into a different container than the actual receptacle because if you get a piece of shell or if you have a bad egg, you don't want to have it ruin your whole dish. And then rinse my hands and go out the egg. Okay. And then I'm going to add, it calls for between half a cup and two thirds of a cup of half and half for milk. So I've got it just about right in the middle of that. I'm going to add that to my eggs. Sometimes I just mix it directly in the measuring cup and that's okay too. And then it's two teaspoons of vanilla goes in here too. Oops, it's a brand new vanilla. I almost forgot. Oh, those dark little things. Mm -mm -mm. So, two teaspoons of vanilla. Oh, it smells good. Mm -mm -mm -mm. I really like to use real vanilla, but unfortunately real vanilla has gotten extremely expensive lately. So if you need to use artificial vanilla, we'll forgive you. Then I'm gonna whisk that together. Get the eggs all incorporated with the milk. Okay, so now let's talk additives because I like to add different things into the scones. And today I'm going to use dried cherries and pecans and uh, mini chocolate chips. All right, so when I use the dried cherries and I, I get my dried cherries usually from Sam's Club. You can get them at any grocery store, um, but they're really delicious if you like cherries. But if you don't like cherries, you can use dried blueberries, you can use raisins, you can use craisins. Um, just don't use wet fruit because if you add a lot of moisture into your scones, then it's going to uh, saturate the dough and then you're going to end up with the dreaded soggy bottom. Okay, so when I took those um, cherries, it's about half a cup. It's maybe a little bit more than half a cup, but I cut them all in half with a, a kitchen shear just to make the pieces a little bit smaller so that they incorporate a little bit more evenly. You don't have to, and if you don't have kitchen shears, you don't have to do that. Um, just if you're using, you know, if you're using uh, shears for food, make sure that they're actual shears that are dedicated to using with food. And then I've got about a half a cup of pecan pieces too. Now I always toast my pecans before I use them in recipes. And to do that, you just put them on a cookie sheet and put them in a, a, an oven at 350 degrees for about 10 minutes. And then you let them cool. Make sure they're completely cool before you put them back into a package. It just helps them to be have an extra kind of a sweet taste and um, be a little crisper in the recipes. These I just broke apart with my fingers, just like that. You can chop them. You can use fancy nut grinders and things like that too. But I want these in fairly large pieces and when they're toasted, it's easy just to break them apart with your fingers. So those are going to go in here too. 
And then I'm going to use my mini chocolate chips because that gives a good distribution also. And again, about a half a cup. You don't want to add more than about a cup and a half of additives to your scones because then it ends up being just additives and not much scone left. I really like the Ghirardelli chocolate. It tastes good. All right, so I'm gonna mix those dry ingredients into the flour mixture that we've already worked with. Sometimes I use a little bit bigger bowl, but I wanted you to be able to see what I was doing really well. So, okay. And then I'm gonna add the wet ingredients to the dry ingredients. We'll give it one more whisk just to make sure that we're all good there. And we're gonna pour almost all of that out into the wet mixture. Just a tiny bit left in there and we're going to use that to um, brush on the top of the scones before we put them in the oven. So now I'm just going to really lightly incorporate the dry, I'm sorry, the wet into the dry ingredients here. And once that's starting to come together, then I'm going to get my hands in there too. But we want to get that nice and lightly incorporated first. I know that it looks kind of dry, but you gotta trust me on this one, all right? You don't want your scones to be too wet. Okay, so then I'm gonna scrape off the spoon with my hands. And of course our hands are nice and clean. Okay, and then I'm gonna smush. All right, I'm gonna start kind of putting it together and then I'm going to fold it over on itself and smush. And fold it over on itself and smush again. And that's going to help bring the um, wet ingredients and dry ingredients together without making the scones tough. If you knead the dough too much, then you're going to end up with tougher scones because they're overworked. And tough when you're playing football is good. Tough when you're eating scones is not. All right, now one of the things that this helps to do also is create what's referred to as lamination. So that's gonna give us some layers in our scones that will help them puff up nice and tall and give some good flaky layers in the middle too. Now I've gotten my baking sheet ready and I like to put a piece of parchment paper down on my baking sheet because that helps keep the scones from sticking. I've divided my dough in half. I'm gonna plop down one half there. And I'm gonna plop down the other half here because I'm gonna form these into a circle, each into a circle. Now, like I said, it's a little extra sticky today for some reason. I think it's a little more humid out than sometimes. But we should be able to still get these smushed out into a circle, more or less. And just pat them out like this and so. And you want them to be, oh, between half an inch and three quarters of an inch tall. So smush, smush, smush. Okay, so that's pretty good. And then we're gonna cut the scones, okay? And I like using a big knife for this, a big knife, sharp knife for this, because you do want to separate them just a tiny bit. Now what you don't want to do is you don't want to saw the scones because part of what's going to help them to um, rise really well is the cut edge. So all I do is I come down at this side and I kind of wiggle. I'm not going to saw them, I'm just going to wiggle. 
and I usually cut them into six relatively equal pieces. little bit better if you separate them slightly. So we're just going to do that. Just back them up a little bit from each other. It doesn't have to be real far apart. Just lift them a little bit and move them out a touch. And same thing over here. And scones are great with a lot of different things. You can do a savory scone with about a, a cup and a quarter to a cup and a half of uh, shredded sharp cheddar cheese and about a tablespoon of minced garlic and a tablespoon of parsley and a tablespoon of basil. Skip the sugar in that case, but incorporate that into your dry ingredients and then you have a lovely um, cheddar herb scone. So the last thing that I do then, um, I use a pastry brush. If you don't have a pastry brush, honestly, you can probably just use your fingers to do that. But I like to just use a pastry brush. You can get them even at the dollar store. So it's not like it's a expensive thing. And you're gonna kind of brush the last of that egg and milk mixture over the top of your scones. That's gonna make them pretty and shiny and just help with your aesthetic a little bit um, once they're all baked. And it's also going to help the sugar stick because I do like to put a little sprinkle of coarse sugar on top of them if you've got it. Otherwise just a sprinkle of regular sugar will do the trick. And if you run out of the, if you're like, oh I didn't put leave enough of the egg and milk mixture in, I'm just put a few more drops of the milk in and kind of swish it on the sides to get a tiny bit of egg in with it. And that works just fine too. Now we're going to go to the sugar. So now that we've put a little bit of the uh, uh, half and half and egg mixture onto the scones, we're going to sprinkle them with a little bit of coarse sugar. I like like the raw coarse sugar. That's really nice. It looks like this then. And it just makes it a little extra pretty. It's like putting glitter on it. So Mr. Campbell wouldn't approve, but I bet if he could taste it, he'd say it's okay. As long as I clean it up myself, right? So now our scones are ready for the oven. The instructions say that you can put them into the freezer for about 10 or 15 minutes and that'll help them to rise higher. Quite honestly, I've never had the opportunity to do that because we're always anxious to eat them and so I'm, <laughs> I'm always just getting them directly into the oven. The oven has been preheating to 425 degrees. So you want your rack to be in about the middle of the oven and you're going to very carefully slide that in there so that you don't burn yourself and close her up. Okay, you're going to set the timer for 10 set. I like to check them after about oh, 15 minutes or so. So I'm going to Set that for 15 minutes, and then we're gonna check them. Uh, 16 will do. All right, so we'll just have to wait and see. It's gonna start smelling really good in here in just a couple of minutes. to check the scones. So I'm going to take a peek here. Oh, those are starting to look pretty delicious, but they're not quite done yet. So what I'm going to do is actually rotate the cookie sheet a little bit. See, we want them a little browner on top than that. 
and put him back in for, let's say, another three minutes. So now we wait again and it's really smelling good and making us hungry. So there goes the timer again. I think that they're actually done this time. Oh my goodness, oh my goodness. Those look yummy. All right, so you can see the sugar gives them a little bit of sparkle. That milk and egg wash gives them a tiny bit of shine and they just look really, really delicious. Now you do want to let them cool a little bit. They're best eaten warm, but if you ate them right now, you would burn your mouth. So, and very carefully take one of these beauties, put it on a plate. You can split it. You can, you can see some of the nice little layers that happened in there. And, or you can just put a little bit of butter on the top. And let that melt. And then, as soon as it's cool enough to eat, enjoy. Mm. Oh, still pretty hot. Mm. Yummy, yummy. So now, you don't have an excuse not to do something nice for your mom on Mother's Day, and you can enjoy some tasty scones too. Thanks for joining me.